Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla. Today is July 19th, 2023, and this is the State of Health. Today, we are going to dive deep into a recent study about a medication you might not be familiar with. It's called transexamic acid. This drug has been a hot topic in the world of trauma treatment, but the question on everyone's lips is, does it really help trauma patients survive and recover better? Let's find out. Let me paint a picture for you. Imagine you're an emergency medical responder rushing to the scene of a major accident. Your patient has a high risk of trauma-induced coagulopathy. That's a fancy way of saying their blood isn't clotting properly because of their injuries. You're armed with a little something called transexamic acid, a drug that could potentially kickstart the clotting process and increase their chances of survival. This is the scenario researchers tested recently. They chose adults with major trauma at risk for trauma-induced coagulopathy and divided them into two groups. One group received transexamic acid even before they reached the hospital and continued to receive it for eight hours upon arrival. The other group, well, they got a placebo. The goal was to compare the outcomes of both groups. Now let's get down to the nitty-gritty. The results. The study involved 1,010 patients from Australia, New Zealand, and Germany, divided almost equally into the two groups. After six months, around 53.7% of those who received transexamic acid had a favorable outcome, compared to 53.5% in the placebo group. That's almost neck and neck, folks. But here's where it gets interesting. When we look at survival rates within the first 28 days, we see a slight drop in deaths in the transexamic acid group, 17.3% compared to 21.8% in the placebo group. By the six-month mark, the gap had slightly widened, 19.0% in the transexamic acid group compared to 22.9% in the placebo group. So what does this all mean? Well, it turns out that transexamic acid didn't significantly increase the number of patients with favorable functional outcomes after six months. However, it did appear to reduce the number of deaths in the early stages following trauma. But before we start celebrating, let's keep in mind that the difference between the two groups in terms of serious side effects, including vascular occlusive events, wasn't significant. So it's not a magic bullet, but it's definitely something that could be useful in our trauma toolkit. All right, folks, before you rush off, do me a favor. If you enjoyed what you heard today and want more, jump over to your favorite podcatcher of choice and check out the State of Health podcast by MedSchool. We're chatting up all things health and the latest medical stuff. Hit subscribe, leave a review if you feel like it, and join our health-loving crew. Trust me, you won't regret it. And there you have it, folks. Be sure to tune into our next episode where we'll continue to dish out the latest medical scoops. And remember, as your trusty guide Kyla always says, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close. Until next time, Keep your health in check and your wit even sharper.